now. Okay, so just a reintroduction. I'm Huey Poplock, uh, and I'm talking to the uh, Glendora Seniors Computer Club in California. I'm sitting in Florida, and we're going to do a presentation on identity th theft and how to avoid it. I first uh, uh, got interested in doing this presentation several years ago when I got a call from the Bank of America telling me that, uh, asking me if I was in Georgia and I and buying gas. And I said, no, I'm not. I'm in Florida. They said, well, somebody's using your credit card in Georgia. So they immediately shut off that credit card, sent me a new one. And then we waited to find out how much they ended up charging. It was about $3,500, including tickets, a plane ticket, a some uh, football game tickets, uh, and so on. And it, luckily, it all got erased. It was fairly, we caught it right away, and it was not a, a long-term situation. So let's talk about identity theft. Uh, what is it? Uh, it involves acquiring key pieces of someone's identifying information, such as name, address, date of birth, social security number, and so on. Uh, it's taking over the, the victim's financial accounts, uh, making purchases in the victim's name, could be applying for loans, credit cards, social security benefits, and so on, or establishing services with utility and phone companies. Identity theft may be used to facilitate crimes, including illegal immigration, terrorism, and espionage. Identity theft may also be means of blackmail. Uh, so there are also cases of identi identity cloning to attack payment systems, including medical insurance. Uh, common types are child ID theft. Uh, children are not immune to this. And a lot of times uh, uh, what uh, these people will, the bad people will do is mm -hmm. they find out the date of birth of a new child. Let's say you make an announcement over your Facebook account. Oh, I've got a new grandchild, so-and-so, so-and-so. You give the name, and she was born this morning. So now they've got the date of birth, and they got her name or his name, and so all they do is apply for a, a social security card in their name, and you may not discover it until they're 18 or 20 years old. So you gotta be careful there. Tax ID theft, very, very uh, uh, pr prominent uh, way of taking uh, your identity. Uh, medical ID theft, uh, and then of course senior ID theft. ID theft schemes that are target that target seniors. And then there's social ID theft, where a thief uses your name, photos, and other personal information to create a phony account in so a social media platform. You see that a lot on Facebook, where you'll be asked to be a friend of somebody you're already a friend of. And what somebody has done is they've just taken all the information off of their Facebook page, created a new one, and then are trying to build a list of all of their friends. Uh, or somebody who steals a wallet, purses containing personal identification, uh, credit cards, uh, social security number, purse snatching, pickpockets. We're going to talk, and I'm going to show you some examples of some of these things, uh, where they steal mail, including bank and credit card statements, uh, watching you writing checks. Of course, most of us don't write checks anymore, but uh, a lot of times you did, and you'd be bending over the counter at the uh, uh, your supermarket and filling out a check and they can look over the side or if you're using your credit card a lot of times they can they'll look over and watch or they're going to pretend they're talking on the phone and take a picture of your credit card as you're putting it into the uh, uh, swiper uh, complete a change of address form to divert mail to another location they rummage through your trash it's known as dumpster diving uh, find personal information in your home could be a a salesperson, could be a, a somebody coming in to clean, could be somebody coming in to fix something, or it could be a relative. It just sees your check or, or your bills out on the desk and they just either take a picture of it, take it, just pick it up and take it home with them, or just uh, write it right down when you aren't looking the information. Uh, use personal information, individuals share on the internet. So whether you're on Facebook, Pinterest, or something <laughs> else, uh, they may glean some information from that or from a website. Uh, and then, of course, there's credit card skimming. And uh, the ways uh, identity theft can occur, sending email posing as a legitimate company, which is known as phishing. I'm sure you've gotten emails like that. Uh, you get information from the workplace. 
uh, it's, it's business record theft by stealing files out of offices. Uh, you don't have a lot of control of that, but the businesses you, you do, uh, that you deal with, you should make sure and, and, and try to deal with companies that you know that are trying to protect your identity and your information as well. Uh, so if you go into an office and they've got files spread all over the place uh, that anyone can look at, you, you might think again about using uh, that business. Uh, eavesdrop on public transactions. Uh, have you ever heard somebody uh, talking into their phone and let's say their card got uh, declined or uh, they're doing something, at, sometimes they're buying something over the internet, so walking down the aisle of a store and they blurt out their uh, a credit card number and somebody's nearby and writes it down. Uh, Drive-by, which is farming, in other words, drive by your house uh, and pick up your Wi-Fi and able to, to get information from there. Uh, browse social networks, uh, you know, Facebook, Twitter, and other social networking, and looking for personal details. Uh, might be a picture of your house, and you might say, uh, all is well on, on Main Street, and there's the number on your house. So all of a sudden, now they know the, the number of your street address. Uh, simple research uh, about the victim in government registers online, Google. Uh, voting registration uh, uh, lists are readily available online, which gives your date of birth, your home address, and your full name. This is the most recent data that I could find, and it's because uh, most of the data for the full year of 2019 uh, won't be out for another month or two. So this is the ID theft uh, by age for 2019, just the first three quarters, January through September. You'll notice uh, I put in red that if you look at the people who are 60 and over, which is probably most of us, uh, you've got about 100, over 115 uh, per 1,000 uh, in, in our age bracket. And you'll see in the other age brackets, it's, it's, it's less. But the way they break it down, there's so many uh, that are senior citizens there, they don't lump it together as a senior citizen. They do it in 10-year uh, uh, groupings. But you'll see that seniors are uh, aimed at for ID theft. Here's by types, th uh, ID theft types, and it's also by age. This is for the year 2018. Uh, these are the typical Types of ID theft, there's bank fraud, credit card fraud, employment or tax-related fraud, government documents or benefits fraud, loan or lease fraud, other identity theft, and phone or utilities fraud. Uh, I sent uh, Jim a copy of all of the slides and what I try to do on some of these slides. So if you want to go over and look, really look them over, I also put where I got the slide from. So you'll be able to go in and, and go to that website and take a look at that unless they've updated it or they've deleted it because they do have an update. So you might want to look at their website as well. Okay, there are five groups at greater risk of, uh, of identity theft. That's social media users. Uh, it says a growing target. They just are a, a big target. Paying with plastic makes you vulnerable. Mobile phone users are a new target, are a target. This is for an older list. Children aren't immune, which I mentioned earlier, and executives are a rich target because they, uh, they've got the money. Okay, here's a video. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go out and I'm going to come back in because otherwise the video is a little bit off track. So what we're going to do is I'm going to stop share and then I'm going to share again, but I got to push a different button. And we're going to watch this video. You might have to adjust the volume. Paying for gas may cost more than just $2.97 per gallon. It may also cost you your identity. And it can happen just like this. It's called skimming, and it's incredibly lucrative. In one case, three Los Angeles thieves netted $2 million. How does skimming actually work? So when you take your credit card and you put it in the machine, 
the reader captures the electronic information on the magnetic strip on the back. What happens with skimming is two copies of that information are made, one to process your transaction, one for the bad guys to steal. ID theft affects 9 million Americans each year, and skimming, which can happen at the gas pump, in stores, or even at the ATM, is just one of our top five ingenious ways fraudsters can steal your identity. Number two, medical ID theft, which is on the rise and scary. Thieves use your ID to gain access to doctors, dentists, prescriptions, and procedures, and then send you or your insurer the bill. This scheme is not only a risk to your financial health, it could cost you your life. And someone thinks, you know, you've had a procedure performed or you've had medication administered that you haven't, I mean, that poses a real threat. Number three, social networking abuse. According to one survey, one in five users has encountered identity theft-related scams. When you're fanning or tweeting, you may be giving away great clues to ID thieves known as pretexters or fishers. They claim to be organizations you trust, or they pretend to be you. That's source number four. It is surprisingly common. Family and friends and people that we trust could be the ones taking our identity. How? Well, at work, in the home, in your college dormitory, any place you've got your information. One of your coworkers can go through your wallet, go through your purse, grab your credit card information, grab your bank card information, and steal it. And it happens all the time. It's one of the most common ways that identities are stolen. And finally, number five, dumpster diving, where thieves find a treasure trove of information. Every year, each of us throws away 175 pounds of paper, much of which still includes our personal information. And for the determined ID thief, dumpster diving gets the job done. For Yahoo Finance, I'm Carney Sharabi. Okay, and let me uh, stop share. Did that uh, come across okay? Yeah, it looked good. Okay, so let me uh, go back to share. Be good. <laughs> and share again, and then go to the next slide. So, help protect yourself. American consumers' data has been exposed with such frequency that about one in six adults say they, they either they or someone they know is a victim of identity theft, according to Bankrate's uh, latest Money Pulse survey. If you aren't in total control when it comes to your data, uh, there are some things you can do to protect yourself. Start by avoiding these six bad habits. It's definitely worth being uh, worried about protecting yourself. Six bad habits. Tossing sensitive documents into the trash. If you don't have a shredder, still have a good pair of scissors and really cut things up. Uh, anything that has my uh, address on it or, or uh, Robin's address, when we get uh, any kind of mail, uh, we tear off the label and we run it through our shredder. We don't. Hey, you don't have to run the whole document through the shredder unless it's got your name in a lot of places, but just the name and address usually at the top or within it, or if there's an order form in a magazine, uh, if you get a hay band or some of the uh, 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 magazines, uh, catalogs, it has a, uh, an order form in it. A lot of times they have your address and account information already pre-printed on that form. Uh, I pull those out and run them through the shredder as well. Failing to check credit reports. Uh, by law, you can check your credit reports for each of the three credit reporting agencies uh, once a year. And so what they suggest you do is you divide them up and every, every four months, contact one of your credit card uh, agents, uh, the credit uh, uh, agencies, and have them send you your credit report so that you're getting uh, three of them a year, but they're spread out every four months. Uh, bank on unsecured Wi-Fi. Be careful. Make sure you're on. You don't go to McDonald's and use and go to your bank, or in a hotel room. Uh, make sure you're on a secured Wi-Fi, uh, either your own or you're using a, a hotspot from your phone or you've got a VPN. Uh, use the same password across multiple accounts. Don't do that. Bad, bad, bad. If you do, uh, I know it's hard to remember them. There are a lot of really good password manager programs out there. Some of them are free. Some are free, but they have a, a yearly charge. 
uh, for some added things like being able to share that account through multiple devices. I have my manager, my uh, password manager, on my f on two different phones, on my PC, on my Chromebook, and on on my uh, uh, iPad. Uh, failing to monitor your accounts, make sure you are monitoring your accounts when you get your bill. Check it and go through every every one of the items and make sure there are things that you bought. Even if it's something for just a dollar, a lot of times if somebody has your information, they'll charge a dollar's worth of something to see if, if they have a problem with it. Uh, failing to freeze your credit after a breach, you can freeze it at any time if you're not using it. And I'm going to talk about freezing your credit in just a bit. ID theft by state. Uh, this was the latest list I could find. Uh, because the 2019 list is not finalized yet. Florida's number one, California was number seven. Uh, Works per uh, thousand population. Uh, the loss amount online for the year 2019, California is tied for number one. And the lowest, if you want to move to New Mexico, uh, the, you're, you're less likely to have identity online identity theft. That's you probably there. can't get on. <laughs> uh, phishing uh, is brand spoofing is a scam, which is perpetrators disguise themselves as well-known companies <clears throat> and fish for personal information. So what are they looking for when they send you these emails asking you to, to send something back to them? They're looking for social security numbers, dates of birth, uh, passwords or PIN numbers, uh, account numbers, credit card or bank account numbers, or an ATM or a debit card number. Uh, when, when internet fraudsters impersonate a business to trick you into giving out your personal information, it's called phishing. Don't reply to emails, text, or pop-up messages that ask for your personal information. Don't click on links within them either. If, it's, if you get a message saying you're, there's a problem with your bank account or there's a problem with, with some other account, don't respond from that email or that text. Call the company direct and ask them if they sent out such a notice because that's what I did when, when the Bank of America sent me a note saying uh, there's a problem with my credit card, I immediately took out my credit card, looked at the back, found the 800 number that was printed on my credit card, and called them and asked for security and talked to them. And they're the ones that said, yes, it is us that was trying to get a hold of you. So do it that way. Don't just click on that email because it may be linked to the bad guys and they're asking for you to verify your account and it's, it's going to stop it's going to you're going to have an error or it might come up with a page that looks very much like their page uh, but it isn't them it's the bad guys and then you're giving them the information to verify your address your your checking account number or your credit card number and so on Examples of phishing messages, if you open an email or a text or see a message that looks like this, we suspect an unauthorized transaction on your account. To ensure that your account is not compromised, please click the link below and confirm your identity. It scares you. you they, use, they sometimes word it in such a way, if you don't do this right away, your account is going to be closed or we're going to fine you or the police are going to knock on your door because you did something... You, you didn't show up for a, 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 a jury duty or something. We need to, to verify that you, and then we need to make sure that you're all right. Uh, and when, as soon as you do that, they have your information. Uh, during our regular verification of accounts, we couldn't verify your information. Please click here to update and verify your information. When you get letters and, and emails and messages, text messages like this, don't respond to them. But you can get in touch with the companies directly if you feel that there may be a problem. They know that the majority of people use one of the big banks, Citibank, Bank of America, uh, Capital One, and so on. So they send it to everybody that they, they get a list of, or they send it to everybody. They have a list of email addresses thinking that you're, you're bound to have one of those. Or our records indicate that your account was overcharged. You must call us within seven days to receive your f refund. Uh, 
The senders are fishing for your information so they can use it to commit fraud. How to deal with it? Delete the email and the text messages that ask you to confirm them. Legitimate companies don't ask for this information via email. The messages may appear to be from organizations uh, like banks, for example, but they may threaten to close your account and take action if you don't respond. Don't do it. Contact them in a different way uh, directly. So you, a, a number that you know is theirs. Don't reply, don't click on links, or call phone numbers provided in the message uh, either. Uh, these messages direct you to spoof sites uh, that look real but whose purpose is to steal your information so a scammer can run up bills or commit crimes in your name. Area codes can mislead too. Some scammers ask you to call a phone number to update your account to access a refund, but a local area code doesn't guarantee that the caller is local and they could even be out of the country and you're racking up uh, minutes talking to a foreign country and they'll put you on hold and you don't realize you're talking to some place that is you're being charged for that call. If you're concerned about your account or need to reach an organization uh, that you do business with, call the number on your financial statements or on the back of your credit card. Uh, use trusted security software. Set it up uh, to update automatically. In addition, use these computer security practices. Don't email personal or financial information. Email is not secure, so don't send passwords through email. Don't send your information uh, uh, like social security numbers through, your, through email. Only provide personal or financial information through an organization's website if you've typed in the web address yourself and you see signals that the site is secure, the S for the HTTPS, but unfortunately no indicator is foolproof. Some fishers have forged security icons. Uh, review credit card and bank account statements as soon as you receive them to check for unauthorized charges. Be cautious about opening attachments and downloading files from emails. Re report phishing emails. Forward them to uh, either spam at uce.gov uh, or if you contact the security company of the of the company or the security department of the company that uh, that it appears it came from. A lot of times they'll say, "Please forward it to our uh, so we can do some follow up on it." Uh, you can also report phishing email to report phishing at antiphishing.org. It's a, an anti-phishing working group, which includes ISPs, security vendors, financial institutions, and law enforcement agencies. Uh, if you might have been tricked by a phishing email, file a report with the Federal Trade Commission at ftc.gov slash complaint. Visit the FTC's identity theft website, and I'm going to have more on that uh, a little bit later. Uh, victims of phishing could become victims of identity theft. There are steps that you can take to ma minimize your risk. Okay, here's another video I want to show you. Uh, again, let me uh, stop the share. This is one I really want you to be able to see well, too. I get to share. And let's start. I'll probably play this a couple of times. It's only 13 seconds. I want you to watch the woman. I, I think you can see where the finger is pointing in this video. I want you to watch the woman here and watch her cart. There is no sound with it, but see the woman coming towards her, grab her purse out of her cart, and walks away. That quick. Let's do that again. Her purse is in her cart. Where there, a lot of women put their, their purse in that part of their cart, and she grabs it, and she's off, and no one is the wiser. And as you, next time you go grocery shopping in, this, in the store, see how many people are... Uh, have women have their purses in that part of their cart. Let me stop the share once again and then come back in and shut that off. So the data beach, uh, data beach uh, breaches are a serious problem. Uh, uh, data beach trends through quarter three nine, 
2019. Uh, notice how they're on the rise each year and the number of records lost in millions. Uh, it's just, it, it's astronomical. These are things you really can't do a lot about. These are happening to companies that you do business with. But this is why you have to be uh, in contact with your credit reports and watch your bills on a regular basis. So if your data has been breached, uh, you'll see it come up and you can report it as quickly as possible. Here's the breaches from 2018. The total for the, uh, for the year was 250 breaches. Uh, records exposed were over 5,444,000. Uh, in 2019, as of December 4th, just a couple of, uh, uh, what, about a month and a half ago, the total breaches were 1,338 for the year and 163 million records. A record is your information, your, your social security number, your, your password, your first and last name, your date of birth, and so on. Data breaches from 2017 to 2000, December 4th, 2019, you can see in businesses are the highest. Uh, medical and health care is next. Uh, there's banking, credit, and financial. There's government and military. And then education and schools are getting hit as well. Here's what a typical leak looks like. A lot of things are are. Uh, redacted here so you can't read them, but you'll see that uh, it's a username, a card number, and so on, and it's just text. And what they've done is they've gotten all of the information, and this is the kind of information that was gleaned from a Panera Bread breach in 2018. So you can see your username, your card number uh, that matches that, and so on, and, and an email address uh, gone, and somebody bad has that information. <coughs> Here's some information from a Wisconsin breach. Uh, notice this. The stolen laptop from that, that one breach, the stolen laptop was encrypted, but the password to the laptop was in the stolen work bag, which was against the company policy. So in the review, TMG found that the laptop may have contained personal information about I, uh, IRIS participants, including names, addresses, dates of birth, participation in, in IRIS, which I, I'm not sure, uh, their services, Medicaid numbers, financial. In other words, a lot of information was in that laptop, and the person who was responsible for the laptop carried around the password for it in the same bag. Mm -hmm. And that's how that breach happened. Breaches by industry. Uh, I'm not going to go into this, but uh, there are a lot of industries in almost every industry in one way or another, healthcare and financial services uh, and education actually lead retail in breaches. Uh, phishing and hacking, a lot of the people who work in those companies filled out some kind of a, responded to a phishing email in a lot of cases. <clears throat> So not only do you have to be careful of it, but you better, you have to hope the people who are working for companies that you deal with are also diligent. Top causes of data security incidents in 2015, which is an ongoing thing. So it just so happened this was a report for 2015. Phishing and hacking or malware. Employee action or a mistake. Sometimes they even, uh, uh, they used admin for a login on a non-US database at Equifax, and that was the big Equifax uh, break-in. Uh, it was just a, a default uh, password. Other cases that uh, uh, they just forgot to put in a password, and it was everything was out there for the bad guys. Uh, external theft, uh, vendor thefts, uh, somebody coming in to fix a computer got the information or got to the information. And then internal uh, uh, theft, in other words, a disgruntled employee or an employee who just uh, says, oh, that information is there. I can get that and I can sell it to, to other people or I can use it myself. Or lost or improper disposal of data. In other words, somebody lost a laptop and they didn't have a password for it. Or they left that password in the bag like that, that one incident. 
Uh, so it's important that you put some kind of a password on your phone and on your uh, on your laptop if you take them out of the house. And if you don't take them out of the house and you get people into your house, you still want to have some kind of a password for them. What's your worth on the on the dark web? Uh, at the most, probably twelve hundred dollars, probably a lot less. And these are some typical amounts that the bad guys pay per uh, per information. So your email is only is worth maybe ten bucks to somebody. Uh, delivery uh, companies might be worth sixteen dollars, and so on. Uh, there are there's prices out there for the information that they have. How do you find out if you've been part of a breach? Here is a website that you can go to, and it's called Have I Been Pawned, P-W-N-E-D, the address down on the bottom right-hand corner, and this is what the website looks like. This is a legal, good, uh, trustworthy website. You go to that website, and uh, it's grayed out in the box, but I typed in my email address, and bingo, breaches you were pawned in. And then it lists them and then some other information. Let's zoom in on that a little bit. Here are some breaches that I was pawned in. And let's go in a little closer. And you can see I was in an Adobe breach in 2013 and another one in October 2019. My email address was in that breach. Now, whether they got any information, whether anything was done to it, but I'm aware of it and I might have to go in and change my password for that particular company or uh, – some kind of an item uh, that would have been dealing with that company. Uh, and then this is breaches that affect this account. In other words, my email account, uh, it, it goes and gives me a bunch of figures that I'm not going to go over with you, but it's just, there's a lot of information about different breaches and different information. Another place where they can get information from you is that personality quiz you just took. In fact, one of my friends just posted the same one on Facebook this week. What are they doing? What's the first letter, your first name, and what's your birth month? Okay, so they're getting, they're gleaning some information about you. There are other ones that may ask for uh, what year did you graduate high school in? Well, they can figure out your age from that. Uh, a lot of times your birthday is on there, but not the year of birth. Well, they can figure it out. Or uh, they may be on your Facebook page and you're talking about your granddaughter just had her 18th birthday or, or your daughter had her 40th birthday and you had a big party for her. And they can then click on that daughter's name, go to her website, find out her date of birth, which was today or yesterday, or, and it's probably listed on their Facebook page. Now they got the year as well because they know she's 40 years old. They subtract 40 from today's date, and, they, and they're all set. They've got her date of birth now and her name. So beware of things like this. Uh, which uh, Harry Potter character are you most like? And, and then they'll ask you some questions, and those questions can lead to the kind of information uh, that will give away your ID. Facebook uh, users are being targeted for their personal information via quizzes. Uh, 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 Facebook quiz, uh, what is it? Under the pretense of being a fun way to kill some time, quizzes that are shared by social media users have gotten more and more invasive over the years. Some of those current quizzes are nothing more than privacy death traps that require full access to a lot of your personal information. Uh, and what are they after? Well, obviously, they're after your personal contact information, but your friends list and even your photos. It's a way to dupe you to handing over your social media content and history while well, they profit off your contact information by selling it to advertisers or spammers. How can you avoid it? Uh, as tempting as it is uh, to have a computer inform you of your most commonly used words on Facebook or something like that, uh, Avoid the temptation to relinquish control of your personal data. Avoid answering questions like these. Your mother's maiden name, your high school best friend. These are in quizzes besides the fact that they're used as security questions for bank accounts and, and, and other businesses or doctor's office. Your high school mascot, name of your first boyfriend or girlfriend, and so on. These give a lot of security information to the bad guys that they get somehow from your uh, 
uh, from these quizzes that you answer. Uh, sometimes you'll see something like this, this uh, and what it does, it takes certain words, and they have you put in a bunch of words. Well, those words a lot of times indicate some information to the bad guys, and so they want to know the most words, uh, most used words on Facebook, and they'll pick those things up, and now they've got some information about you you might not want them to have. Uh, download a copy of your Facebook data. If you want to know what Facebook inf information is out there, go to your settings, this circle here, click on that, and then click on settings. When you do, then click to the left to your Facebook information. When you do that, you'll get this. It'll say download a copy of your Facebook data. It explains what it is. You can pick and choose which of that data you want. You tell it to create a file. It creates a zip file, and then e uh, I can't remember whether it emails it to you or it, uh, it tells you that it's available and you can download it. <coughs> so it says down, download a copy of your Facebook information. Uh, and yeah, it's an HTML format for file one, and then it says download again. So I had to click a button, and that downloaded it. Here's another thing that uh, a, a lot of my friends uh, send me requests to be friends of theirs, and I'm already a friend on Facebook. And, and somebody will tell you, well, you've been hacked. You're not. You haven't been hacked. You've been spoofed. If someone requested you to be a Facebook friend when they already are, well, they weren't hacked. They were spoofed. Has some, one of your friends on Facebook told you that they received a request? You weren't hacked. You were spoofed. Hacking. <coughs> Someone's used a computer to gain unauthorized access to your computer. Spoof is someone has set up a fake profile pretending to be you in order to gain access to your friends and their personal information shared on your Facebook. I'm going to mute for a second so I can clear my throat. Okay, I'm back. Uh, the difference is, is important to understand. So a lot of times what people do is when this happens, the first thing they do is they go out and they change their Facebook password. Probably not a bad idea, but that isn't what you should be doing. You should report it, or one of your friends can report it, to Facebook, and there's a way uh, you, when you go to block it, you get, there's a choice. Uh, for a reason, and you say it's being used, uh, and it's not really that person, it's a friend of mine, and that reports it to uh, Facebook, and believe it or not, they very quickly respond, and a lot of times that uh, profile disappears. And I posted uh, a, a big article that uh, uh, I got from somebody who, else who wrote it, but I have their permission to post it on my website, and that address is on the bottom at huey.net slash spoofed dash not slash hacked. ATM scams. Uh, a lot of you use bank ATMs and a lot of you use uh, gas pumps uh, that have equipment in them. Uh, this was a scam and uh, this is an older one, but a lot of the bank ATMs uh, are, are being hacked, and I'm going to talk about that, but let's take a look at a video on this first using a skimmer. So hang on, stop share. New at 10, a different kind of pain at the pump. Thieves targeting your credit card information as you fill up your tank. In fact, one local woman is out nearly $4,000. Good evening, I'm George Mallet. And I'm Carol Meekin. She is warning others about credit card skimming at local gas pumps. Our Katie Crowther joins us live with more on this. Very concerning, Katie. Yeah, Carolyn George, she banks with Chase, which called to notify her that there was suspicious activity with her account not long after she had stopped to fill up her tank at the gas station. I tried to use my debit card to buy a drink and then my card kept getting declined and I knew that I had money in my account so I thought that was weird and then I tried to look into my account and then I just started seeing things that I did not make purchases on on my statement. Like $3,000 worth of stuff at Saks Fifth Avenue and 400 at Sephora along with a lot of other decline charges Brittany Anderson never made. 
She believes she was targeted at a gas station in River West, along with a handful of other people. I'm just wondering, you know, who's doing it? How do you even get in there and do that? I'm very confused about it. This comes as more than a dozen gas pumps throughout Wisconsin were found to be rigged with illegal credit card skimmers, which can be easily bought online, <laughs> providing criminals with your financial information. So far, there are three confirmed locations in our area where this happened. The open pantry on Blue Mound in Brookfield, the 7-Eleven on Rawson in Franklin, and Tripar Quick Stop in Random Lake, where police shared this photo. Brittany just hopes whoever's doing this gets caught before more people fall victim. It was not a fun experience to go through, and you know now I'm out of a debit card for seven to ten days until my new one gets sent to me, and I have to change all my billing information, and it's just a huge pain. A few things you can do to protect yourself. Check for tampering. Wiggle the card reader before you use it. It should not be loose. Also, fill up your tank in view of the attendant always. And also, if you can, pay with cash or go inside the station to pay. Reporting live, Katie Crowther, today's TMJ4. I like those last options. Thanks, Katie. New at 10, a different color. Okay, hang on. This, this is what a hand scammer looks like. Let me... Uh... Uh, whoops, that's not what I wanted to do, but hang on, give me a second, switch this again. And screen up. There's all kinds of skimmers and way they skim. This is a hand skimmer. I've seen some videos where they've, where uh, a, a waiter in a restaurant will tape one of these to their leg, and as they're going to the back, they, they bend down to tie a shoelace or something. They run your card through that hand skimmer, and somebody's sitting at a table somewhere is within the restaurant or just outside the restaurant, and by via Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, they're able to get the data from that card. Then the waiter goes to the register, rings it up the normal way, and brings back the check to you, and they've already duplicated the information to somebody else who is then using it somewhere. Uh, here's a different kind of a hand scammer. Uh, hand, a skimmer, uh, what they do is they put something over the, the card slot. There are different kinds of card slots in ATM machines and in gas stations, and if that's loose, but that was the old way. The modern way now is what they're doing, and here's another one. They just put a, a pad right over the original pad, and that pad has some electronics in it that sends them the information as well as push the buttons so, the bank, so it, it appears to you that it's working properly. Here's what a skimmer looks like. It's just a little piece of equipment that what they do is they break into and what there's skeleton keys for uh, gas pumps. In other words, most of them use the same key. So if they've got a copy of the key or sometimes they just break into it one way or another and then they lock it back up. Uh, in some states, uh, there are stickers that they have, to, the people who check on, on the gas pumps will place over it, but those can, you know, when you look at it, do you know whether it's a real one or is the, is the bad guy sticking his, his own sticker on there? Uh, here's some other pictures uh, from a different, this was from one here locally just about a month ago. Uh, you'll see what it looks like inside of the gas pump. Here's what the actual thing looks like. And, and what they said in the article was it noticed there was a 46 on there. They even number, the bad guys even number them so they can keep track which one is where. So pump safety tips. When you buy gas, you should remember these safety tips. Pay with cash inside the store when possible. If you don't have cash, use a credit card instead of a debit card. A debit card, uh, when you put your debit card in, they take the money out of your account at that point. And so that money is gone from your bank account. If it's a credit card, you're just being charged for that. And that can be erased and, and handled very quickly once you discover uh, the issue, and, and that can be handled. But on a debit card, the cash is gone. For you to get it back, it's a real hassle. Uh, Clark Howard, a consumer advocate calls debit cards fake MasterCard and fake Visa cards because they're not really a credit card. What they're doing is all they are is it's like writing a check and as soon as they or handing them cash, as soon as they have the money, it's gone. So credit cards have, been a, have a better fraud protection on them. 
Uh, check for signs of tampering at the pump. This includes a broken security seal over the door. If something seems out of place, notify the gas station personnel. Uh, monitor your bank statements regularly. Uh, and you'll notice it says in most of these things, check your, your bank statements every month. Check your, your, your credit reports on a quarterly basis. Make sure you're following up and you're watching it yourself. You can also place a security freeze. It's a, that's a notice that's placed in a consumer's credit report on request from you. That prohibits a credit reporting agency, such as Equifax, Experian, or TransUnion, from releasing the customer's or consumer's credit report, credit score, or any information contained within the consumer report to a third party without the express authorization of the consumer. However, credit reporting agencies can notify a third party that a security freeze has been placed on the consumer's credit files. So if you're not going to be buying something that you have to either get a new credit card or you're not buying a house or a car, having this credit freeze is important. And up until last year, a lot of states charged you to do that, unless, uh, except under certain circumstances. But uh, uh, when should you consider a security freeze? You want maximum control over your access to your credit report. You're concerned that you might become a victim. You are a victim. Uh, you won't need to apply for credit in the foreseeable future. And you are the guardian of a, a minor or medically incapacitated consumer who won't need to apply for credit for the foreseeable future. <coughs> Freezing your credit is free in all states under a new law following the Equifax breach. So as of 2018, a new federal law allows people to freeze and unfreeze their credit uh, at the major credit bureaus without being charged. Before, it used, it used to cost anywhere, cost anywhere from 3 to $12 per freeze or unfreeze. Uh, a, a freeze prevents lenders from pulling your report. So if, some, if somebody can't open up a credit card, uh, a, a new credit card account, because the, they can't, the uh, credit card company can't get the information because it's a frozen account. Okay, some sh safe shopping tips now. Things to be, be careful of when you're shopping. Shop where you're safe. Wi-Fi is great, but when you're shopping online, it pays to use a secure connection. Again, don't do your shopping and purchasing of anything from McDonald's. Don't sign into accounts from McDonald's. Uh, if, if you're going to just do some, some uh, uh, surfing, uh, as long as you don't have to use your passwords and so on, don't do it from where the Wi-Fi is open, especially airports as well. Look for the padlock. Make sure it's a secure URL. It's HTTPS. Uh, don't shop at random stores. You're looking for a product. You come across it. It's got a good price. You immediately order it. Be careful. That store, you don't know anything about that store, that location that's selling it. Look around, see where else it's available. Check Amazon, check other places, make sure the pricing sounds right. If it's too good to be true, it most likely is. If you've never heard of the company, do some research on the company that you're ordering from. It, it could be one of those offshore companies that uh, it's going to take four to six weeks to get to you because it's going to be coming from China. And that happens to me a lot. I, I buy a lot of small things that are very cheap, very low shipping charges or none. And when I get them, it's all in Chinese. It's come from China. And I actually have a tracking number that shows me when it, when it was delivered to the post office in China and then how long it took. So it's literally on the slow boat from China. Hmm. Don't use debit cards uh, online. Uh, really avoid debit cards, use credit cards if you're going to use anything. And I'm going to talk about some alternatives to that in just a moment. And then use a virtual credit card. And uh, let's see, they're available from most banks. Most of the banks now, they're not doing it. I checked with Bank of America because I used to use their virtual credit card. They don't have it anymore. That was called uh, Shop Safe. Discover had something, and I called Discover uh, this week to double check and uh, they no longer do it, so I had to remove a couple of the slides from the show, uh, from this presentation. So there are some ways to protect yourself from ID theft, and I am going to talk about the virtual cards in just a minute. But lock your mailbox. Do you have an outdoors mailbox? 
if it doesn't lock, you can buy a lockable ma mailbox for around 40 bucks. One of the things that they do is the, the bad guys will steal your mail. When you say, well, where are they going to get from my mail? Well, they're just going to get bills. Yeah, well, your bill's got all your accounts on them, your account information. They can call and pretend it's you and change the account over to, to a different address. They can uh, put in a change of address for certain items and so on. Uh, leave nothing of value in your park card. Attempt identity thefts. This means your wallet, your laptop, your mobile device. Don't leave them in your car. Even if it's locked, they can break into your car. All a lock does is keeps an honest person honest. A bad guy is going to get in your car. Don't just toss your sensitive documents in the trash or recycle, recycling bin. Uh, shred them first, and that's what I mentioned to you. Uh, use a micro-cut shredder, the kind that shreds documents into confetti, confetti uh, to destroy your sensitive documents. Micro-cut shredders cost about 30 bucks, or they can be up to a couple of hundred dollars. That's on how big they are and how much they hold. Uh, secure your smartphone with a password. Make sure, I know it's a pain in the neck every time you want to look at your phone you got to type in those numbers it's got you got to look at it and, and it's got to look at your eyes or your thumbprint but an AARP survey found that more than a quarter of adults with smart smartphones fail to protect them with a password when you set your password avoid those that would be easy to guess like birth dates names of kids pet names and names in a sequence one two three four protect yourself from ID theft Again, secure your computer by regularly changing passwords uh, and, and have different passwords for all of your items. Use a password manager. If worse is worse and you've got to do something, at least have them in some kind of a notebook and that notebook is put away that someone can't just grab it. You've got to go reach for it if you've got to look something up that if there's a, uh, a relative, uh, uh, a cleaning person, a... A repair person or something, they can't just open it and, and, and find some information easily from you. And, and take out spaces. Change zero, uh, O's to zeros and I's to ones. And, and, but, you know, uh, they have computer programs that this is a very simple workaround for them. It's just like another letter. So it really, it's, the longer the password, the better off you are. Protect yourself again. Uh, uh, don't share your social security number unnecessarily. Doctors don't need that information in, in, in most cases. They already got a lot of that information. Every time you fill out a form, most of them now are not requesting your social security number or may ask for the last four numbers. But in most cases, you do not need to give them to them. They, uh, if you give them your insurance card, that insurance card has got all the information they need. Don't carry your Medicare card or Medicaid card unless you're on your way to a health care appointment. Instead, make a copy and black out all but the last four digits. This is enough information for a provider to get uh, started in case of an emergency. Use a gel pen to write out checks. Uh, use strong passwords to protect financial accounts. Consider a pr passphrase rather than just a passcode or a password. Uh, don't give out personal information over the phone, over the internet, or through regular mail unless you initiated that contact. Uh, if you receive a communication from someone claiming to be your financial institution, again, we talked about that earlier, don't respond. Instead, contact the institution. Uh, here are some password managers. One, pass, uh, one password. Uh, I'm, I'm experimenting with that. No, I'm experimenting with LastPass. Uh, RoboForm is another one. I use eWallet. I've been using it since I had uh, Palm Pilot. Uh, and then Dashlane is another one. So use one of those password managers. Here is another way you can protect yourself. Use a, a service called Blur. <coughs> he uses one-time use credit card numbers to deter hackers. They have a free account, and they have a, another one that's $39 a year or $3 a month, and then they have another. And then my next uh, uh, account, let's see, this shows you down at the bottom right. It says upgrade to premium, $39 a year basic, or $99 unlimited. The difference is with the $39, every time you use it uh, and get a temporary 
credit card number, you got to pay $2, I believe it is, plus a percentage of whatever the amount is. If you have the unlimited 99 a year, uh, you don't have to pay those charges. They are incorporated that in the fee. And all they're trying to do is a lot of those fees are passed on to them, and they're just trying to recoup their money. But the premium allows you to have your own uh, private credit cards, your own private custom emails, your own private phone number. Uh, it stops overcharging. It gives you a temporary card that's that's got a set limit to it, and it's a number that you only use for maybe that particular sale. And you can do that as many times as you want if you've got the 99 a year version. But the, uh, as I said, most of the credit card companies used to have something similar to this for free. They've all uh, done away with it. But this is one company that's out there that does it. Also, the chips in your credit cards. The chips in our credit cards are EMV chips, the new chips that were placed the last couple of years. It stands for EuroPay, MasterCard, and Visa. These chips are not the true RFID chips that we spent all of that time dreading. Some chipped cards are capable of near-field communication, NFC, which are indeed radio frequency communications, but effective only at extremely short distances. So if you bought one of those RFD protected wallets or RFD uh, uh, card holders and you're putting your card in there, that's good, but in most cases it's not protecting you from anything. It's just protecting the card from it, it breaking or getting worn out. Uh, because you really don't have RFD cards, but uh, a lot of you may use those cards where you just take the card and put it next to something. And so being in your wallet, somebody could rub up against you and possibly get that information. So it's probably not a bad idea, but it's you're not as protected as you think you are. And let's take a look at this video. Hang on. The days of having just one kind of credit card that you swipe to use are over. Now we have chips and antennas in our cards and devices to make paying easier and transactions more secure. But understanding the difference between these technologies, EMV, RFID, and NFC, can be confusing. Whether you're inserting your new chip card into a machine, tapping your card against a reader, or making payments through your smartphone, it's good to know just what kind of technology is in your physical or virtual wallet. I take the chip card and put it all the way in until it clicks and stops. Ken Givens with U.S. Merchant Payment Solutions educates business owners and banks on how to use different types of credit card payment systems. The technology that's been keeping him busy is EMV, which is the set of standards used in chip cards. To pay, you insert the chip end of the card into a reader rather than swipe it. The chip makes it nearly impossible to counterfeit the card because it transmits a unique code for each transaction. It has what's called tokenization. Tokenization is where the actual card number is replaced with new numbers and new characters. Another payment option that uses tokenization, mobile wallets such as Apple Pay and Android Pay. These wallets use NFC or near field communication technology to allow you to pay by holding your phone within inches of the reader. NFC uses radio waves to transmit information at a short range. Tokenization means you get the same fraud protection as EMV but without having to insert or swipe a card. NFC is also used in contactless payment cards, though somewhat confusingly these cards are often referred to as RFID cards. RFID is a similar chip type product that sends a signal out, a radio frequency signal. RFID is actually the granddaddy of NFC and a generic term for technologies that use radio waves to identify people or objects. It also refers to the long-range communication technology that's in, for example, highway toll payment devices. But NFC is a type of RFID that requires you to be within inches of the card reader so fraudsters cannot skim your information easily. Still, as use of NFC-enabled mobile payments grows, contactless payment cards are being phased out. Even as our cards get more sophisticated and harder to duplicate, Givens warns they're still vulnerable to hackers when you shop online. And that's the next obstacle credit card companies are working on. Jenny Hoff, CreditCards.com. Something else that uh, 
it's, I don't think they've pretty much eliminated this as a problem, but copiers and printers, when you go to uh, your local uh, uh, print shop or your uh, office place and use their copiers, everything is, is written to a hard drive. But now, for the most part, they are uh, making those hard drives difficult for people to be able to get to the data. They are encrypting the hard drives. But still, it's something to be concerned about when you take that tax form into the place and make a copy of them. Uh, that copy is put on a hard drive and then printed. So uh, just beware of that. Most commercial digital copiers use disk drives and the same machines that are commonly used to spit out copiers of tax forms, for instance, and millions of Americans can retain their data are being scanned. And if the data on the copier's disk aren't protected with encryption <clears throat> or some kind of an overwrite protection, uh, there, people can get to that data. Theft after death. Uh, I know Judy Tallur from APCUG has a really good uh, presentation on all the things you should do to prepare for your online uh, uh, a life after death. And a lot of those are how to close out accounts as well as how to protect yourself uh, in, in what you're doing. Children, I mentioned about children, it can be uh, ID theft, can it go from children and, and not discovered for years. These were a lot of the uh, tax season scams and we're running short on time, so I want to just uh, come up. These are some scam alerts from the uh, uh, IRS. Uh, purse advisory theft. Let's take a look at this video. It happens in an instant. Watch as this man snatches a purse in a matter of seconds. Police call them sliders for the way these gas station thieves cagily slide between the top of your door, lying in wait for just the right moment to pounce and run off with your valuables. And this morning, police say these types of crimes are on the rise. Watch what happens at this Texas gas station. This car pulls up next to a woman who's pumping gas. She is oblivious to the man next to her. He brazenly slides right into her car, grabbing her purse and running off before she can even blink. She chases after him, but to no avail. From Corbin, Kentucky to Tampa, Florida, these slippery sliders are being caught on camera all across the country. Sometimes the perp is caught red-handed. This man gives chase after witnessing a sliding. But most of the time, the victim has no idea until it's too late. They're not looking for a confrontation. They just want the property because they know it's being left abandoned and you're not paying enough attention. At this Houston gas station, a woman pulls up and walks inside as a man in the next vehicle cases the inside of her car and she returns to the pump. Then the slider strikes. The woman never realizing she's been robbed. It's very scary that someone could just surprise you and just steal all of your belongings. It's yours. Protect it. And the easiest way to protect it is keep it locked up, keep it with you, and don't leave it in the vehicle unoccupied. Again, as that officer just said, lock your doors or keep your purse by your side. Don't put it on the pump. Don't put it mm -hmm. on the top of the car. It's just too easy to get ripped off. And here's a close-up of another one. This is just about a minute, but it's it's a much clearer. This happened to be the uh, mayor of a local town in Broward County, Florida. She pulls up to the gas pump. There's no sound with this, so I'll just talk over it. She gets out and gets ready to pump her gas. And then just watch how quickly she loses her purse. While she's putting her card in, getting ready and reading the information and putting in her zip code or whatever she needs to put in her pin. He gets in, gets her whole purse with all of her other cards and driver's license and information, and he's off and she has no idea. That quick, that easy. Here's another quick one. Let's see, I, I went by it, but what had happened was it, uh, it was in a, a restaurant. A uh, parent had the kid playing with their iPad and so, uh, somebody walked by, saw the kid was playing with the iPad, ran in, snatched it out of the kid's hand and ran out of the, the restaurant. 
before the kid even understood what happened and tell his mother that your iPad just disappeared with all of her information already signed in because the kid was using it and they can get to any information that was on that. So ensure your, uh, your PIN numbers can't be observed by anyone while you're utilizing an ATM. Never leave receipts at bank machines. Uh, memorize your social security number and all the passwords. Don't record them on any cards or on anything. Don't, don't write your, your PIN number and paste it to your credit card, your debit card. Some people do. Promptly remove mail from your mailbox after delivery. Deposit outgoing mail in post collection boxes or your local post office. Don't stick it in your outside mailbox. Contact your creditor or service provider <clears throat> if you don't get your bills because somebody could have stolen them. Never put your credit card or other financial account information on a postcard or on the outside of an envelope. Uh, beware of promotional solicitations through the mail. Use caution when disclosing checking account numbers. Uh, don't email your personal data unless you use encryption. Be careful when giving information on unknown websites, especially ones found in spam emails. Don't give out your checking account information over the internet unless you're dealing directly with your bank's website. Make sure every transaction you engage in on the internet is over a secure connection, the HTTPS. Consider making a secondary disposable online identity with an incorrect address phone number using a free mail email account. So if you're signing up for something that's free, uh, just put in, uh, use a disposable email account and uh, disposable information and they're not gonna follow up anyway. Uh, if you're a victim, uh, place a fraud alert, place a security freeze, close any accounts that have been tampered with, file a police report. The police won't do anything. All you're doing with the police report is so if you have to deal with any insurance company or any other uh, agency that you can say, yes, there is a report on file. Uh, file a complaint with the FTC and the Attorney General's Office of your state. Write down the name of anyone you talk to what he or she told you and the date of the conversation and hang on to that information forever. Follow up in writing all contacts you've made about the identity theft on the phone or in person. Use certified mail, return receipt requested for all correspondence regarding any in, uh, identity theft and keep all copies of correspondence or forms relating to identity theft forever because it can turn around and pop up again later on. Uh, and this way you can prove that you've done something about it. Keep the originals as supporting document, documentation like police reports and letters to and from creditors. Send copies only. Keep old files even if you believe the problem has been resolved. So if it happens again, you'll be glad you did. Uh, identitytheft.gov is the federal government's one-stop resource for identity theft victims. The site provides streamlined checklists and sample letters to guide you through the recovery process. So, and visit ftc.gov slash ID theft for prevention tips and free resources to share in your community. And this, today's news, today's date, you'll notice that. Microsoft was announced a data breach that affected one of its customer databases uh, that between December 5th and December 31st, a database used for support case analytics uh, was discovered that the unsecured data online claims, uh, claims it was to the order of 250 million records con containing logs of conversations between Microsoft support agents and customers from all over the world spanning a 14 year period from 2005 to 2019. This was today, this was just announced. So these things happen, you have no control of this, but you need to be watching your accounts. And with that, one final word, think. Before you hit that email to answer it or to fill out something or to buy something or to do something, think before you do it. Don't just press a key. And on that, any questions and thank you very much. Thanks, Huey. Anybody have any questions? Okay, seeing none, Huey, I guess we're done. Thanks a lot. Okay, and you've got a copy of all of the slides, and sorry I ran over, but I think there's a lot of uh, important information there. Most likely scared the heck out of a lot of you. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, with that, 
thanks for listening. I hope I didn't put anybody to sleep. And uh, uh, till next time, uh, uh, just avoid identity theft. You'll save a lot of headaches. Thank you. Thanks, Huey. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Okay, let's take a break.